Today we want to talk more about um, our section on mobile and um, cool video I dug up on the Internet of Things just to give us a little bit more to talk about that. And then uh, we want to spend a fair bit of time today um, just looking at... Uh, Okay, good. So we want to spend some time preparing for our in-class advertising assignment, which is next week. And because of the way Flex Day falls, which is next Tuesday, there's no class, right? It's the whole college is closed for students. It's just us faculty who get together and uh, do our thing on Tuesday. So we'll be missing Tuesday, which means we want to get prepared today for what we're going to do next Thursday which is hopefully a fun assignment of regarding advertising. Thanks. And so uh, that'll take some time from today's class just to look at some commercials and, and maybe get into groups around a few particular commercials. And then um, people who are online can also get involved in that. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll explain that as we go along. And then... Uh, the week after next, um, if I, I believe that's uh, coming into midterm territory. So let's just take a look at that. So uh, yeah, uh, next Tuesday there's no class. Next Thursday we're doing the advertising analysis thing and filling in a little more with our advertising slides. And then the week after we're going to do the midterm review on March 13th. And then on the 15th, we'll have the exam. And you have to come in, those who stream, you have to come in and actually write the exam in classroom. Uh, but the review, you know, you can stream the review. And uh, you know the cahoots that I've been using have exam questions in them. So uh, I'm going to make available those cahoots, uh, let's say, next Thursday. Hey, Tom. Hi. Uh, I'll make those available so that you can use them for review like a full week in advance. I'll do that next Thursday after our advertising analysis. So somehow we're going to be inserting stuff in there. Tom, before I forget, I have a printout of yes, sir. Uh, something for you. Oh, thank you. There they go. I'll make it a little easier. Some, I have some homework to I can try to check. Oh, you know, uh, just at the end of class? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. Um, so Thomas, I was saying just on the, on the agenda for today in class, we're going to keep talking about mobile communications a little bit, and then we're going to get prepared to do an advertising analysis thing that we're doing in class. Next Tuesday, there is no class. The whole college is closed on Tuesday, March 6th. Okay. So the next time we meet up is on March 8th here. Okay, sir. Sure. And we'll see if we're preparing some stuff for that. Yes, sir. Okay. Is it a midterm on the 15th? The midterm is on the 15th, so on the 13th in class we will be, or streaming, we'll be reviewing for the midterm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and then I have, I have uh, uh, some, some items that will help people prepare that I'll give on March 8th. Okay, uh, and then when we come back from midterm, I see we'll be talking about ratings and audience measurement. Uh, I did a lot of research into that, so that's that. To me, that's a fun one, uh, where we can, you know, get, exchange ideas on it pretty well. Um, so let's just see. Uh, well, let's kick things off with that quick review about the Internet of Things. By now, and uh, so as we said, the Internet of Things, uh, although the ultimate uses of it have yet to fully. Uh, emerge, you know, we know that uh, we're looking at probably voice activated interfaces like Amazon's Alexa is probably a, uh, a forerunner of what we'll be using. So less screens, more voice and gesture activated uh, uh, devices somehow. Um, Amazon itself is licensing Alexa all over the place, so all kinds of people can be using the voice recognition software that's in there. 
Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, just like Alexa has what seems like ever-growing, uh, what are they called? They're not apps within Alexa, they're skills or something like that. You buy more skills for your Alexa. Basically, you know, the device can be a controller for more and more around you. Am I right about, is it, you guys remember, is it skills that you're adding to Alexa? I can't remember. I was over at a friend's place last night. They've had one since Christmas. I should have played some more with it. Uh, but it's pretty slick as a voice-activated uh, device. You know, just mostly playing music for now, but soon doing all kinds of other stuff for you. Changing channels, changing the lights, uh, opening things, closing things, ordering stuff, which of course is the big, one of the big apps. That's why Amazon's leading there. Um, so, uh, and it works across the same networks, the same mobile and wired networks that, uh, that the internet does. It's just carrying different data. It's using the same protocols. So this talks a little bit more about the organization of the Internet of Things, which is a big deal. By now, you may have heard the term Internet of Things. Sounds interesting, but what does the Internet of Things actually mean? IoT is an evolution of mobile, home, and embedded applications that are being connected to the internet, integrating greater compute capabilities, and using data analytics to extract meaningful information. Billions of devices will be connected to the internet, and soon, hundreds of billions of devices. As related devices connect with each other, they can become an intelligent system of systems. And when these intelligent devices and systems of systems share data over the cloud and analyze it, they can transform our businesses, our lives, and our world in countless ways. Whether it's improving medical outcomes, creating better products faster with lower development costs, making shopping more enjoyable, or optimizing energy generation and consumption. Here's an example of the big picture. Imagine an intelligent device such as a smart traffic camera. The camera can monitor the road for congestion, accidents, and weather conditions, and communicate that status to a gateway that combines it with data from other cameras, creating an intelligent city-wide traffic system. Now, imagine that intelligent traffic system connected to other city-wide transportation systems, which get data from their own intelligent devices, creating an ever-larger intelligent system of systems. The really big possibilities come from analyzing the end-to-end -end data across that system of systems. For example, let's say the city's intelligent traffic system detects massive congestion due to an accident. That insight can be sent to the city-wide transportation system, which can analyze the accident's impact on other city systems. Recognizing the accident is near the airport and two city schools, it could notify those systems so they can adjust flight and school schedules. It can also analyze and derive optimal routes around the accident and send those instructions to the city's digital signage system to guide drivers around the accident. And that's just one example of the potential benefits that can happen when intelligent devices share insight with other systems, forming ever-expanding systems of systems. Yeah, okay. That's as far as we go with that one. I don't think we need more of that. Oh. Let's see what IBM says. The Internet of Things is changing much about the world we live in. Ah. From the way we drive, to how we make purchases, and even how we get energy for our homes. Sophisticated sensors and chips are embedded in the physical things that surround us, each transmitting valuable data. Data that lets us better understand how these things work and work together. But how exactly do all these devices share such large quantities of data? And how do we put that information to work? Whether we're improving the production of a factory, giving city residents real-time updates on where to park, or monitoring our personal health, it's the common Internet of Things platform that brings this diverse information together and provides the common language for the devices and apps to communicate with each other. The process starts with the devices themselves, which securely communicate with an Internet of Things platform. This platform integrates the data from many devices and applies analytics to share the most valuable data with applications that address industry-specific needs. Let's start with a simple example, a car. After taking a long road trip, Rebecca notices that her check engine light has come on. She knows that she needs to have her car looked at by a mechanic, but is not sure whether it's something minor or something that needs immediate attention. As it turns out, 
The sensor that triggered Rebecca's check engine light monitors the pressure in her brake line. This sensor is one of many monitoring processes throughout the car, which are constantly communicating with each other. A component in the car called the diagnostic bus gathers the data from all these sensors, then passes it to a gateway in the car. The gateway integrates and sorts the data from the sensors. This way, only the most relevant diagnostic information will be transmitted to the manufacturer's platform. But before sending this organized data, the car's gateway and platform must first register with each other and confirm a secure communication. The platform is constantly gathering and storing thousands of bits of information from Rebecca's car and hundreds of thousands of cars like hers, building an historical record in a secure database. The manufacturer has added rules and logic to the platform. So when Rebecca's car sends a signal that her brake fluid has dropped below a recommended level, the platform triggers an alert in her car. The manufacturer also uses the platform to create and manage applications that solve specific issues. In this case, the manufacturer can deploy an application on the platform called the Asset Management System. This application oversees all of their customers' cars on the road, as well as all the parts in their warehouses. It uses the data from Rebecca's car to offer her a potential appointment time to service her car, directions to the nearest certified dealer, and a coupon for the service. What's more, the app will ensure that Rebecca's brakes are covered under her warranty, that the correct replacement part is ordered, and then sent to the dealership so it is ready when she arrives. But the manufacturer's analysis does not stop there. They have also deployed a continuous engineering application that tracks not only Rebecca's car, but hundreds of thousands of others, looking for ways to improve the design and manufacturing process of the car itself. If the same problem in her brake line crops up in a critical number of other cars, the manufacturer uses applications custom built for the automobile industry to pinpoint the exact problem. They can see if these cars were made at the same factory, used the same parts, or came off the assembly line on the same day. So what do all these pieces add up to? Streamlined inventory management for the dealer, a better, safer car from the manufacturer. And for Rebecca, it means she can be back on the road faster and get to where she's going safely. All thanks to the Internet of Things. So, what did you think? Yeah, Jonah? So like, when all this stuff crashes, and we're like too dependent on it, like what are we, what are we gonna do? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, now I feel like if it crashed, probably would be the thing like once, like 10 years, 20 years, like when it's fully integrated and dependent, I feel like it could be chaos <laughs> or something. I agree. Especially like the transportation. like the When we're all expecting the car to keep driving itself and it suddenly <laughs> stops doing that, yeah. I, 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 yeah. There's a vision in there of kind of like, I, you, did you guys see WALL-E where they're, you know, in the spaceship where they're all kind of like these out of shape blobs that are, ev they're every, their every desire is met by some technology or something? I don't, I don't know. So it, I'm, I'm pretty sure this sin sin signals that there's going to be some resistance towards moving towards this, this future. On the other hand, my experience is when it's just, you know, presented to you, offered to you, oh, I got this, my iOS just updated. Well, look at all those other things it can do for me. And then you just start using it. And then it's like, you're on your way, you know, that's um, so it, sh it should be interesting to see, you know, just what flourishes, what doesn't. But I share your, I share your skepticism, Jonah. Yeah. How about other people? What did you think when you were seeing that? It also, it makes an assumption about a user that they want, you know, they want to pay top dollar to the dealer so they can get back on the road as fast as possible. I think for some people in society that's true, but that, you know, is not my main objective. I'm usually like waiting till the brakes almost completely wear out. And then I'm going to my old school mechanic who I trust, who charges like 60% less than the dealer, you know. And, uh, and I, I, if I had a car that he could no longer fix, I wouldn't see that as necessarily positive either. So it kind of, I don't know, I think, again, there might be some resistance there or there might, you know, there might be a... Uh, were her, you know, again, one could look at that critically and say, okay, I mean, that's appealing to, you know, an elite twenty percent of the population who actually wants things that way. But what about everybody else who's, you know, uh, you know, dependent on less formal uh, systems to to make everything work? Uh, yeah. Another thing is, yeah, Sarah. The problem is like the the only concern I have is that like it seems improving our lives a lot. And for some reason, if the humanity was good, it's great. 
because it can solve a lot of problems about accidents and everything, yeah. congestion. The problem is that we don't know how this data will be used. <coughs> uh, that's, good point. that's the only concern, you know. Right. It's like right. today, yes, it's like all, oh, oh, that's great, peace, love. Yeah. One day, or if anything changes in society, you know, power, you know, politics. Yeah. So. Absolutely, you know, front front and center, they'll they'll say, oh, it'll improve the reliability of the car. That it's great for the manufacturer, but there's all kinds of you know constant. Who would imagine that shirt. Trump was like in the power? And you know, if you think like about the people who can get the power one day unexpectedly, they can use this data for do yeah. anything they want. Yeah, that's true. And that is scary. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. <laughs> even even you know, without any like. Uh, uh, nefarious intent. There's, uh, or as I was hearing on the radio just recently, there's a whole issue about uh, getting getting access to data, which you know a company may have servers in Ireland, or they may have servers, you know, yeah. So they have servers in Ireland. Uh, the part of Ireland that's part of the European Union has different laws that govern privacy and data than the United States does, right? And so the fact that the data may be over there. You know, the FBI wants that data, but it's in another country where they're not allowed to get it. And so then it's like, well, you know, so it raises all kinds of new issues. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And also what would be done with that data. Yeah, because yeah, I can see like in Europe, for example, there is more protection about your data. Companies cannot sell your data like right. here. Yeah. Here you get called and I never give my number. Right, right. But yeah. in Europe, they can't. Yeah. I mean, there is like, even there are some issues, but not like here that everyone can have your number and you are totally... Yeah. Obama administration put in more privacy protections and then they got rolled back, like one of those many regulations that Trump is happy to tear up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it could go back the other way again. Who knows? It's hard to rely on it. Yeah. Man, you probably didn't team Pardon me, Ron? I said, man, you brought up the T word again. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, Jonah? I mean, I feel like it's kind of weird, though, also, because even if there are, like, laws in place, like, for privacy, like, anything that's on the Internet can be found. Like, if someone really wants to find out any information, like, they for sure can. <laughs> yeah. But, like, there is really no privacy on the Internet. Yeah. Like, regardless it's, it's, of how you're you're counting on all that secure connection stuff to really be secure, I guess. Yeah. yeah it's. Yeah, yeah, you know, but the funny thing is, though, probably where we are today is many people would have, ten years ago would have had such concerns about where we're at today, and yet here we are. We got here today, so who knows where we'll be ten years from now? But uh, this stuff is going to be real for sure. I mean, it's, uh, well, anyway, it's pretty interesting. So I don't know if you have any ideas for how to exploit this new, you know. Uh, Everything interconnected type of data. It it sounds <laughs> take take some IT courses. I think in our in our place here would be good. Definitely be good for you. Um, anyhow, let's get, let's take check in with our slides, and then we want to have plenty of time. In fact, let's just check in real quick with what we got here, and then <clears throat> move on to our advertising. Uh, Preparing our advertising assignment, well, you know, in-class exercise. Yeah, hope it'll be fun. So, uh, yeah, we talked about the Newton as an early PDA, personal digital assistant, um, the VOIP, the different uh, schemes that, um, protocols that move data over the internet we talked about. We talked about OTT over the top content, right? It was Roku that I was trying to think about. Anyone got Roku? Anyone? Yeah, Jonah? Is it, it's supposed to be like really very open. Like, are there all kinds of like, I know the NRA has a channel on it. That's what uh, was being discussed I don't today. I, use it for, I don't really use it that much. Okay. But I use it for or not Oh, okay. I was like almost writing in the chat, but I felt like stupid. I thought it was not dead, and I was like, maybe I'm bringing up something that is totally. Oh, no, come on. Because I have the Roku. Oh, you have it? Yeah. yeah. You, are there any interesting channels on it that you. That, that are you know more appealing than what you usually get. Yeah, I see you're, I, you're looking like skeptical. Yeah, I don't watch that much TV. That's also that. Yeah. And yeah. what I 
explore a little bit was not that. Yeah, it's not going to spend your time. Because I'm very yet. selective now that I that I have like. So well, there's so much, right? I mean, there's so so many channels Too already. Much. Yeah. It's like you know. I agree. When there's when there's an NRA channel like devoted just to people who like guns and stuff, that's, uh, so there is on Roku. Even something that we could avoid having yeah. now we have as the space. At least before, maybe they couldn't find space because right. Yeah, they only had like a hundred channels on but cable. But now it's like everybody can tell everything they want, and it's scary. That's true. It's true. It's, it's like limitless projects. access. You know. I mean, what it comes down to is, can you make enough money to survive doing that type of thing? You know, I. Uh, 15 years ago, I had you know friends in graduate school who went and you know they started a kind of a court channel type thing on cable TV, and they had to give it up after a couple of years, even though they got their channel on cable systems and stuff. It just didn't make enough money. They were losing money every month because their you know carriage fees were like I don't know, two cents or something per subscriber, and they just weren't getting enough money and to even pay you know um, starting camera operators with interns and you know every every single way you could you know uh, make the business as cheap as possible they still couldn't do it so on a Roku or something like that I just think that you know the economics are even more stacked against you unless you've got you know uh, some other form of revenue you know unless you're being for instance sponsored by an organization like the NRA or something which has a lot of money to spread around and at that in that case you know it's like if you have money, you can communicate. If you don't, you won't. You know, and a lot of socially good things don't necessarily gather a lot of money versus a lot of corporate-driven stuff does. So, you know, I don't think that's going to cure our, our information uh, bias towards you know large corporations. And, so, I mean, in this environment where, you know, over the top has joined all of those cable channels and stuff, uh, broadcast TV is still, you know, hanging on by being a kind of a loss leader and making, making the public aware of shows which then will go into the Netflix library or Amazon, you know, and become available after that for years to come. They may never go away, in fact. Um, so, so broadcast TV is just one part now of uh, of an entertainment strategy, and, and it's more and more just you know to get people aware of it initially, and then it joins everything else in the back catalog. Webisodes are interesting. I remember that last semester we looked at a whole bunch, and uh, what was interesting was you, you'd watch some webisodes and you get used to everything coming at three, three or five or seven minute you know episodes. You know, they could be really funny, really rapid, and then you know we moved back to what was it? Was one of those shows? Um, uh, I think it was High Maintenance. We watched some of the early, or maybe it was um, uh, the Two Girls. What are they called? Broad City. Yeah, They're, it's both excellent shows that got picked up by HBO. Anyhow, you watch a few of the early webisodes. They're great. Then you get to the HBO half hours, and they kind of like they kind of lag, you know. So, I don't know, have you guys had that experience? Are you like, you still have the en energy for an hour of sit down TV? Yeah, Jonah, yeah. <laughs> if it's good. Yeah. Yeah, right. But no, I don't know, more and more of those short webisodes are kind of like, they have an appeal. You know, you can tell something real quick and then get it out. All right, and then time shifting. You guys all remember what time shifting is? It's like your TiVo, or, or is it TiVo? Never know, TiVo, I think. So you record a show, you watch it later. Uh, that really messes up the broadcasters, but, uh, but it's good for us. Oh, OK, we already looked into this, right? Um, so yeah, those are some of our concerns here. A world of digital devices uh, may lead to information overload and privacy and surveillance. We brought that up. Too many channels, too much to watch, information overload, we retreat. Like, what the hell? I only watch one thing once a week or something. You know, privacy and surveillance, then we start worrying you know, about every time we log into a service or connect to something new. So uh, again, later on in this semester, I'll ask you to dip into some industry news and, and we'll, you know, uh, do some very real quick presentations about what's going on in the industry and inevitably we'll come back to this particular you know bunch of developments that we're talking about you know the 
entertainment being industries changing into sort of providing you know every channel becomes kind of leveled whether it's streaming whether it's broadcast uh, whether it's cable you know they all start coming into your television in the same you know connection you, people can't really tell the difference anymore and on the corporate level the consolidation of you know companies as that one buys out the other and you you know you get these bigger and bigger conglomerate corporations you know so we're watching uh, uh, AT&T try to take over Time Warner they definitely be the biggest cable system out there and cable is kind of not that interesting more anymore but you know being the internet service provider is very interesting um, and with changes to those privacy laws they can also sell data that they collect which they couldn't they were barred from doing that before but now they can so uh, you know all, all these companies are, are existing within this new environment and so yeah we'll, we'll have some specifics later on in the semester when we actually dip into that you know and, and I'll ask you guys folks to come back with something interesting to tell us about. I think it was clear from our essays, the first essays you guys wrote, that the smartphone is the number one device. And uh, it's really changing everything in terms of you know, mobile access to, to all kinds of stuff. Jump over those two things down there. Yeah, OK, so we did talk about the Internet of Things. I think we've covered the main stuff anyway. We will see when we do some salutes, but let's we got 45 minutes left, which is plenty of time to do this. So um, I'm talking about the in-class assignment. Um, so as I said, this is, this is not going to be a, a super tough. Um, so we're getting prepared today, and then we're going to do it next Thursday. And um, I always have trouble pulling these up. So I mean, what we want to do is um, I'm proposing that we look at Super Bowl ads and we want to analyze the Super Bowl ads from, you know, I have some questions down here that we could ask about each of them. And then what I'd like to do next Thursday is uh, I want to I kind of just like sort ourselves into groups of three, be able to discuss it a bit today. And then next Thursday, come back. We'll have a quick, you know, just talk to your group again, get it all back in your head. And then, you know, uh, we, we might have four or five groups maximum. Just come up. We'll show the ad again. And then I'd like your group to pitch the ad to us as though you were pitching the concept. Okay, so, so this is where it gets a little more fun than just sitting up there and saying, I see there's lots of blue on the screen or something, which is cool in its own right. But if you guys can... You know, so then pitch it to us. Who's your target audience? What is it? You know, what is it you want to uh, communicate to them? And, and how? You know, how? How would you? you know, given that the ad is already done, but you're sort of saying, okay, okay, client, this is what we're going to do for you. So that's 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 where the fun part is. You you get to just sort of pitch it. Like, how is this going to be a good ad? You know. So some of the questions. So. I mean, we can, we can look over a reel of uh, top 10 Super Bowl or so. Did anyone take a look at, yeah, I gave you one of all of them. Did anyone find anything they were interested in already? OK, well, we can look in class today at, at you know, the top 10 sort of and, and maybe sort ourselves out about that. So when you're looking at it, what I'm asking you to talk about, and th this is, you know, this could, you could talk about part of this or more of it. It's OK, but these are just ideas, you know, to get to. So how would you describe the design of it? Like, you know, the concept, is it, you know, is it like a car racing through nature? Is it, you know, like a, a spoof of some kind of television show you've seen already, you know, or whatever? Uh, is, there a lot of, is there a lot of written copy about it? Is there like a constant voiceover? Or is there like a lot of on-screen text and stuff? And then thinking about the way that, uh, you know, it looks visually, it's like, okay, you know, how, how, what, you know, do, are there angles? Is there lighting? Is it dark and moody? So what kind of mood do you think this would have? Um, what, and color scheme as well. And then a great uh, indicator, this is not always the case, but very often, 
is that they will put people in the ad who resemble their target audience, right? And then Dylan, I know this is like, <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just thinking maybe, and anybody who's had, it, it's in Dylan's family, this whole advertising thing. And maybe you had some advertising uh, classes or something. So then you're going, Cecil, like, this is nothing new. However, to me, it was interesting and new. So they'll, they'll put people in the ads who reflect the target audience on the idea that, well, you, if you could maybe see somebody like you in the ad, It'll be more convincing to you, you know. So pay attention to who's in the ad, and and even things like you know hair, fashion, props. Are they using stuff, right? So it's not necessarily they're maybe not selling these things to you, but they're selling you know. With this, they're kind of selling you an identity, and, uh, so so that's cool. And then you know what's the action that's going on? Is there any symbols in there? Is there like a big American flag because it's President's Day? You know, or something like that, uh, uh, and 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 you know, and then yeah. So there's a ton of stuff here. You don't you don't have to get into all of this, but maybe today you could discuss some of those things, and then over the next week before you come back, just look at it again, and so maybe you'll have a little more insight the next time we meet up, right? Okay. So that's just the analysis part. We'll we'll start it up today, and part two is presenting your pitch. So like I said, next class next Thursday, you will have like 10, 15 minutes to everyone sit down and in your groups. And again, streaming you can do this streaming. It's okay. You just need to turn it into me written. But it's a lot more fun if you come into class and you can sit with a group and just talk this over. So you know when you when you do get up here to you know do your pitch as you are from the agency, you know, you want to say, well, what's the product? Who's your target audience? Uh, do they, you know, what need does this satisfy? You know, and that could be very specifically, you know, you need something to chop your food up with, or it could be, you know, very broadly, uh, you know, you, you want to feel uh, uh, like, uh, like you're young and sporty again, or something like that. So. You guys could discuss what need it actually has. So what product features are you going to highlight in the ad? You know, and so I mean, sometimes if it's a beer commercial, you know, you're, you're, you're just selling the idea that people like to hang out together and have a beer, you know, and so that would be uh, even that as a product feature, you know, but if it's a car, you might be like, you know, uh, uh, competing on price and also competing on luxury or competing on, you know, mileage or something like that. And then finally, you know, what, what options do you, or, you know, what are you going to ask the audience to do? And here, you know, for Super Bowl ads, there's not always like a really clear call to action. So there you go. And then <clears throat> any of those other things we asked you about, you know, the way it looks, the way people look or stuff like that. Um, you know, that's just where you bring in your, your, the smart things that you thought while you were looking at the ad. So that would, that would be the second part next Thursday. So any questions about how this goes? And like, there's really no right or wrong answers. It's really just like, you know, let's, let's get together and do it. Okay. Let, well, let's look at, uh, um, let's look at the top 10 reel and maybe from that, you guys could figure, oh, I like, you know, number one, number two, or number five, and then you could get together and just talk it over a little bit. And you can, of course, look at it on your own devices. Or you might decide you want to work together with somebody and just then figure out what commercial would be good for you that way, too. Either way is great. So anyway, let's just look at this reel. And uh, you might remember a commercial that uh, you thought was really cool from the game. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I don't know what you came to do, but I ain't come to lose. Faster! How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. Peter Piper picked a peck. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck 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 chuck? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Come on, man. A little bit louder. I need conviction. I need to feel it. I need to be like, ew. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? You ready? Yeah. Let's go! Showtime, baby! Hello! Hello! Let's go! Hello.
taste. Of all Sundays, the game had to be this Sunday. Wow. All right, let's go, both teams on the field. Let's go, play hard, huh? Let's get it done. Let's play. Let's all right. Play. Red card. Uh, what I do? All in. Here we go. Red card. Too cute. <laughs> Trying too hard. That's rough, bro. Just getting us out of here. Red card! Twins! I can't tell what that is! Tiny legs! Stomping his feet! I don't know how to tie my shoes. Steal red card. Nose pick! I saw it too. <laughs> I just can't with you. You know what you did! High five! Red card. That's me! Not enough players on the field! Happy Super Bowl, everybody! <laughs> Introducing the first ever Hyundai Kona with Blue Link. Take me to Charlie's Sports Grill. It's designed to save the day. I've had three people try to eat me today. Three. Ooh, lucky penny. Anyway, sometimes I wish I were human. Whoa! Look at me. I'm human. Do you want to eat me? No. Do you want to eat me? No, thanks. No? Would you like to eat me? Ah! Nobody wants to eat me. I'm the luckiest. <laughs> You dropped your lucky penny. Man, I look good. You're still short and bald. Mmm, <laughs> Super Bowl. Brenny, I'm secured. Well done, my king. Shuri, is my ride ready? Of course, big brother. But you have to hurry. Step into the spotlight. And the crowd goes. And the crowd goes. And the crowd goes. Show off. Step into the spotlight. Experience luxury performance that takes the crowd. Presenting the all-new Lexus LS 500. Long live the king. That's what I would do. Should I be making motorcycles? Yes, you like motorcycles. Should I start a motorcycle company? Yes! You really like motorcycles! Should I make a Squarespace website for it? Yes, they're very good websites. But why am I in the desert talking to myself? <laughs> Don't ask me. Okay. You're telling me you don't hear things at night? This place isn't haunted, man. What was that? I don't know. When you use Groupon in your neighborhood, you're not only saving money, you're also supporting local business. I mean, what kind of person wouldn't want to support local business? <coughs> I hate local business. Family owned, even better. Shut it down. When you save in your neighborhood, it feels so good. It didn't feel good for him, though. <laughs> Download the app and save. Groupon. Everybody's like, Tiffany, you're a celebrity now. Why do you still use Groupon? Aren't you worried that people will think you're cheap? Shut up, Amber. I can't stand you sometimes. Groupon makes me look good. Look at all of this. My skin is like, what? My nails are like, yes, ma'am. And my face is like, hello, stranger. Ooh, let me buy my other Groupon. Got it. About to get wrapped in mud next. <laughs> Download the app and save. Groupon. Right. That's how we do it. On the farm. Barbecue Pringles. Pizza Pringles. You made barbecue pizza. Wow. 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 I had a jalapeno. Spicy barbecue pizza. Wow. 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 <laughs>
Wow. Wow. Wow, you can stack different flavors? Nobody asked you, Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> stack flavors, make new ones. Alexa, what's the weather like today? In Austin, it's 60 degrees with a <laughs> Alexa? Amazon's Alexa lost her voice this morning. Alexa lost her voice. How is that even possible? We have the replacements ready. Just say the word. Are you sure this is going to work? Yeah. Oh, my God, for real? <laughs> I got it, though. I got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so Let's get it started. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, I'm, I'm shooting a tight end for the Super Bowl. Shooting a tight end? Yeah, apparently last year the guy who they really dropped the ball. Really? Yeah, is that what they say? Drop the ball? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey guys. Hey, who's got a key? What do you like me out for? Alexa? Amazon's Alexa lost her voice this morning, causing a Alexa lost her voice? How is that even possible? We have the replacements ready. Just say the word. Are you sure this is going to work? Yeah. Alexa, show me a recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich. Pathetic. You're 32 years of age, and you don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Its name is the recipe, you Alexa, how far is Mars? Oh, okay. crap. How far is Mars? Well, how am I supposed to know? I've never been there. This guy want to go to Mars. <laughs> For what? <laughs> There's not even oxygen there. Alexa, set the mood. Now setting the mood. You're in the bush. Mm. And you're just so dirty. And you're so sweaty. Because it's hot in that bush. Alexa, rebush. Re reboot. Alexa, play some country music. Oh, I don't dance now. I make money moves. No, no, Alexa, country music. I be in and not them bend so much, I know they tired of me. What's it called, Brandon? I'm afraid Brandon is a little tied up. <laughs> but do let me know if there's anything I can help you with. <laughs> Jessica? <laughs> good boy. Thanks, guys, but I'll take it from here. So okay, okay. <laughs> All right, well, the, I, I labeled them all in backwards order, I guess, compared to the video, but uh, you guys see any one that you might want to work on together, or? What's up, do we have a? I really like the Alexa ad. The, the long one? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get you on board. Anyone want to work with Dylan on Alexa? Jonah? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anybody else? We're supposed to be like maybe threes. Andrea? Okay. Anybody? Well, Ron, what would you like? Or it's like three people. Yeah, um, yeah. But what's your second choice? Shit. Oh, well, you don't have to if you don't want it, but. Uh, Doritos. Doritos, the first one or the? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah first, the first one. The first one. Remind me what goes on in that one. I can't remember. Wait. So Morgan Freeman and the, the guy from I don't think it was the right. full one either. Okay. Yeah, I think it was cut a little bit. Oh. It could be like two, four. Wait, I didn't see the zombie one. <clears throat> you like the zombie one? No, I didn't see the zombie one. Oh, I mean, I was calling it zombie. That's the one with like the, you know, the makeup character and everything in the all blue bag. Oh, you mean the one with Golden Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. I don't know. And, and, but by the way, feel free to go for the longer versions or something. If these are cut down, I, I don't even know. Like Alexa didn't make any sense to me in the shorter version. And then I saw it in the longer version. Oh, OK, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. but it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. And the Tide, I mean, I saw the night of, I saw the Tide thing. It was a lot better than that. I don't know. I didn't like the Tide. Anyone want to work on the Tide one? There was more lips to go with. 
<coughs> well, we gotta, you know, come on, we gotta get together on something. <laughs> Are there other ones that uh, I have? I have like the full. No, I thought it was weird. Because it's Terry Crouch. I don't remember that. We're Rhett and Link, and we wanted to show you how. Well, hour too, ideas. if you want, if you want to try more. Uh, Oh, yeah, that that's why he's getting all awkward about it. Oh, <laughs> I'll just say, that makes yeah. sense. I'll just say about that, man, he got really fat. That I makes mean, sense. How about this one? App Store. Welcome everyone to the first annual Salad Bowl, brought to you by Sun Basket, where produce battles on the field of greens. And Tony Romonesco, partnered in the booth as always with Howie Longbean. Thanks, Tony. You look radishing. And from the line of spinach, here's the snap pee. Oh, it's a quarterback leak. And the linebacker, Brussels Sprout, out of bounds. He's in a bit of a pickle now. Oh, it's a potato sack. Wait, flag on the play. Unnecessary roughage. Automatic 10-chart penalty. That play will lead to plenty of shiitake in the locker room after the game. The rooting section is going wild as we approach the Fennel play. Time is running out, but Tom Mato Brady is as cool as a cucumber. Shucks, the cornerbacks are blitzing. Wait, it's a Kale Mary. Peeled goal. It's a Peeled goal. Veggies win the 2018 Vince Kohlrabi Trophy. Tomato Brady, you just won the salad bowl. I almost artichoked, but my team was rock salad. Don't get steamed about that. Yeah, I know that's kind of like cheesy, but. Oh, God. <laughs> Anything else interesting there yet? No? <laughs> I don't know. What else do we have? On this side, so we had salad bowl. That's a possibility. A favorite of my kids, of course. So many cheesy yeah. jokes in there. We had Wendy's. Got to choose something today. Can't spend our time not picking stuff. Uh, so I changed my mind. I'm going for m and You want to go for m and m OK. Who wants to join Ron with I'll, I'll try. Sorry, who? Tom? Okay. Thomas is going in with Ron. Anybody else? Third? We need a third person? With M&Ms. Come on. Can't go wrong. Danny DeVito? Yep. Remind me of your name. Arnold. Arnold. Okay. Arnold's up there. All right. That's good. That's good. How about Lexus? I mean, there's, there's Lexus's. That was a great spot. That was a great spot. Yeah. And also, there's a lot going on in there that you could talk about, like for lighting, for motion dynamics and the whole vibe that it gives off. I did not yeah, like it was that dual one. advertisement too. I like the great. car. Uh, yeah, I like the car. But yep. I like you the Lexus? Yeah. And what's your name? Uh, Nico. And I see it. Nico. Yes? Yeah. Thank you. All right. I heard it was really good. Who wants to join Nico with, on Lexus? So you want to drive your Lexus? No. Nope. Yeah, sure Come on. We need to get some. Everybody needs something. Yeah. I'd like to group on. You want to go group on with Sarah? Okay. Sarah with group on. Where did I write? Okay. Anyone want to join Sarah on group on? Yes. Ivan. Ivan. Okay. Ivan and Sarah on group on. Anybody else for group on? Henry, what do you want? Um. It's more fun if you the Hyundai commercial. You want to do Hyundai? Okay. All right. It's just yeah. Yeah. It was good. It was good. Um, so who are we missing? Who do you want to be with? Is that like the Lexus Undecided. Sorry. I'm undecided. You're undecided, but now is the moment to decide. <laughs> Today, it's not such a huge decision. It's like, it's like basically, who do you talk to for the next ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Seriously. Very true. Yeah, or you could pick pick another ad if you want to work on it by yourself. I guess. Most and let's see. Just well, I'll take you. I'll take the spotlight off of you. Get into chat. Anybody else? 
Cat coming next Thursday to the advertising assignment. Okay, you folks online, anybody? I uh, haven't seen anything there yet. I'm not sure. So people in chat, you know, you could, I guess they can't really talk to you now, but uh, so uh, something's happening with chat, but any ideas? Or you want to just pick one on your own? <coughs> then you don't have to talk to you. Maybe the Pringles one. Pringles? That's a funny one. Yeah. <laughs> layers, layers. And, and your name again? Sorry. Arthur. Arthur. Okay. Is that everybody who's here? Okay, take 10 and discuss in your group, okay? So that, you, I mean, just so you've had a chance to look it over. And, and uh, so remember the, the, the kind of specific things that you want to talk about um, during this leg of it is, is like basically, you know what the product is, but given that you want to kind of present this as though it's a pitch, so it's just, uh, you know, how, how would you describe this to your client, basically? And, and this is, it's done this way just to be fun and sort of more enthusiastic. It's like, okay, so, you know, what, what, uh, what's, what's your crazy, what's your crazy concept? You know, oh yeah, the M&M's, like, one of them becomes like a real person and, uh, you know, et cetera, right? So why don't you just work out what would be the three or four most important things that you would want to say like next class is as in the idea is you're pitching this okay mm -hmm. so get together we you know we got 10 minutes before we finish up with a little kahoot like super fast kahoot okay all right so that means for instance so dylan jonah and andrea together i mean if you're on your own you're just on your own but take take a couple of minutes to sort of you know jot down your ideas now so that Refreshing the mind. They show a pretty like diverse demographic of people. Okay. Yeah. So like. I hope I hope you guys had enough. Like I at least just get started, and then next yeah. class we can yeah. take ten more minutes before. Yeah, I, more I like mixing. And, and, and you'll have a uh, yeah. chance to do it. Okay. So, are you guys in the mood to actually play this, or should we just go through it? It's fun. It's just it takes time. Thomas. No problem. All right. The question: Does internet telephone use packet switching technology? And yes. Six people got it right. So the answer is yes. So uh, all internet telephony, mobile telephony, since uh, G3, they all use packet switching. Your voice is chopped up into packets, and it goes along with the data as well. But it's just, it has a higher priority because we got to keep your voice sounding uh, real as it goes through the, uh, the network. But it is packet switched. OK, next one. Google Glass was well received by consumers. They loved it. OK, six people got it right again, so yes. Google Glass was very poorly received by consumers, so that one was false. Nobody liked Google Glass, and it's pretty much gone away. Okay, this one you don't know. So smart personal object technology is available in the Apple Watch. So we'll skip that one. Uh, oh, you guys <laughs> got in there, all right. Oh, that was nice. I guess you probably all knew it already, I don't know. So uh, yeah, but let's head on to the next question. <laughs> I should actually give you all the points for that. Which company made the first PDA type of device? Personal digital assistant type device. OK, well, five people got it, right? And yeah, so it was Apple with the Newton, uh, closely followed by Palm with a Palm Pilot. But it was the Newton was the first one there. The Palm Pilot was like better received. Yeah, it was. It was. People actually bought it. But it did a lot less. <laughs> it did a lot less. than. Early users of the internet had to connect to the internet via modems or routers. In order to get to the internet, you had to have a modem, uh, which is called a modem stands for modulator demodulator, and it would take the data and turn it into audio that could get sent on a regular phone line. All right, question six out of 10, we're on our way. Something is defined as machine to machine communications using cloud computing and networks of sensors. What have we been talking about that kind of makes you think of that? 
sensors in your car, sending data to the cloud. In the cloud, it gets analyzed and sent around somewhere else. What would that be? Zero. Oh. All right, six people got it right, one wrong. So at the Internet of Things, talking about machine-to-machine -machine communications with cloud. All right, next up. Online audio, something about online audio does what? Online audio removes geographic restrictions imposed by traditional radio. That means you could get you know, the same program all over the country. It allows listeners to generate their own playlists. True, I guess, false, I don't know. It allows listeners to hear almost any type of music. And the other option is all of the above. I think they're all true. All right, seven people got it correct. All of those things are true about online audio. And we move on. OTT, short for over the top, refers to what? <clears throat> I won't read all these for you. Whoa, okay, that one was a little tougher, I guess. So OTT refers to getting audio or video over the internet bypassing cable providers. So remember, when they talk about over the top, I drew you a little picture, but the, what they mean is here's the television, and on the top is a little cable box, and your signal comes over the top and plugs right into the TV, bypassing the cable box. So that's why they call it over the top. It's kind of like, why they? Uh, that's the reason why. So it bypasses the cable operator and just brings uh, signal in through the internet. Uh, Sling TV is an example of which of the following? So we talked about time shifting, but this is not time shifting, this is something else. Sling TV, as you remember, are you, if you're not familiar with Sling TV, uh, it allows you to take your cable channels from your home and send them to your computer at work, for instance. So instead of having to sit at home, you can watch the same stuff you subscribe to, but you can watch it over the internet in your office. Hey, not bad. Six people said place shifting. So we talked about time shifting, being able to record the show and watch it at a later time. This is place shifting, be able to place shift the show, watch it in a different That's location. Sling TV place shift? Sling, yeah, Sling TV is, is, uh, is the uh, brand name of that, place shifting. Question 10, on-demand digital streaming is available through Netflix, HBO Now, Netflix, Amazon, and HBO Now, Amazon. So which one would you say? So the term on-demand means like when you want it. It's two in the morning, but you want to see that episode, click on it, it's yours. Okay, eight people got it, nice. So that concept of on-demand is how the industry talks about you're being able to see any show you want at any time versus appointment viewing, which is like when they show it, you have to, you used to have to watch it then. All right, there we go. So that's a preview of some of the questions that uh, might make their way onto the uh, midterm exam. Uh, so glad we could get you all started on some kind of uh, uh, um, analysis of an advertisement. And so think it over a little more before next class. You'll have 10 minutes or so to just uh, uh, summarize your thoughts before we get on next Thursday on and present a little bit about it. Remember, no class on Tuesday because the college is closed, the whole college. All right, so good. We'll see you then. Thank you.